What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 98 of Value Town. I'm Chan Man V. He's, he's noxious. Yep. He's me. TJ. <laughs> Welcome back, TJ. <laughs> and he is, who is Dan Zimborski, is basically what the entire chat's been saying this time. You can just refer to me as, as who is Dan Zimborski. He's the random the guy that we just decided guy. to choose. He's the lucky Patreon winner that gets the chance to be on Value Town this week. No, no. Dan is an ESPN writer. He covers Hearthstone as well as baseball so that is the most unusual combination uh i don't think that we've heard of at least in this space so why hearthstone and baseball dan well it started out as baseball and then when we got into ah, esports right. i wanted to do the hearthstone so ah. it was logical is it was logical it doesn't sound logical but it was okay all right good stuff and then tj how's it going brother host caster everything great and talented in hearthstone how you doing man Ah, doing well, man. Uh, great to be on the show again. Love new cards. Been waiting for new cards for a long time, so yeah. it's great to talk about them. Well, we love talking cards with you too, man. Just with your your amazing oh. your amazing deck ideas. We just had to have you back for this last this last big finale of uh, the pre-release reveal. Uh, Noxious, I saw you. I saw you streaming some Hearthstone early. Good stuff. Getting ready for yeah, tomorrow, I mean, right? I'm getting excited for tomorrow, personally. Yeah. Like, again, I haven't really played Hearthstone in the past month, not much at least. I, I find that the metagame's been getting to me too much that I don't enjoy it at all. Um, I, I Like, when you start not enjoying playing Burgle Rogue, you know something's wrong, right? Like, <laughs> you know you can take a break, and I took a break, and I'm ready to get back in. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of interesting to me that we have this, like, this cast today, because TJ is more of the, I don't really care about your fun stuff stuff um i'm just gonna play the real decks you guys ask me about a card i'll tell you how competitively viable it is whereas chanman and i are more on the fun side of things what? where you obviously didn't watch uh, our last episode because tj was the complete opposite oh, no. i don't know man last time that's the last time he was on with me uh, he went I've changed. <laughs> he's changed, I've changed. He's <laughs> definitely changed the boredom of the that, metagame right? got to you and you had to start experimenting too then it was about the uh, the two thousandth shaman I had faced. Yes. <laughs> the guy's like, I'm a changed man now. I play mean priest. Something exactly. Big sparked in my chest. Yeah, I know. You found the now. light when it comes to Hearthstone. <laughs> the... Suddenly, just started imagining every card with a bounce effect. <laughs> with a bounce effect. That's, that's pretty much that what happened exactly... last, last uh, episode. Uh, Goya somehow became the best card in, in the set. In the set, <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, but no, guys, that's what we're gonna do today. You can see the topics are very limited today. We've got basically a crap load of cards to talk about. Yeah. So I want to make sure we had ample time for that. Uh, so we'll be doing that of course we will be introducing our smile segment this week because we made our milestone we made our smile milestone yes so thank you so much to all the patrons for doing that and we'll be doing that somewhere in the middle so definitely be on the lookout for that some patrons have um at least one of our patrons has a mechatorp card for us to look at too so we'll do that really quickly and then we'll finish off with some more cards and then q a uh, we got some email um questions that we didn't quite get to last week as well as some new ones that we will read off Okay, let's just go right into the cards, guys. I've um, tried to figure out a way to divide this up since there's so many. Uh, I figured we'd group them by class and then try to talk to them kind of like <laughs> in a set. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off with a little bit of, I guess, the most a little interesting class or one that got, I feel like, a lot of interesting tools, which is Shaman. Like Shaman didn't need any any help or anything so we're gonna start off with this uh i feel like i'm missing one here oh the guardian oh, the guardian of course so the guardian's yes. the, it's actually in addition to white eyes but or part of white eyes okay so shaman already powerful and we've only talked about maybe a, a few of them given that they're nine total cards so this is like the last half of the cards and why don't we start off with a finder's keeper it's a one mana spell it's an epic card uh, discover a card with overload overload one uh so dan since you're new to the show we'll have you start off like what do you think about this card i i'm not a fan of the card it's a meh card meh card not the okay. word meh m-e-h meh okay all right it's I, I you're already spending two mana on it i mean there's some great cards you can draw with the overload but there's also some pretty lousy ones <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think most of the overload cards are pretty good, though, right? Um, for the most part, 
What's the worst overload card you guys can think of? Uh, finders keepers. Finders, finders keepers. Keeper, yeah. That's true. You can. Yeah, that's true. You can draw back. If you streak them, you that's pretty back. much the. Nuts. Oh my god! I guess fourth lightning good. would come a close second if you're looking for raw value in the current environment. It's mm -hmm. really hard to get like a okay. ton of power out of it, but yeah, I mean, this is definitely on the uh, the bad side. But it's also, I think, Blizzard wanted to give every class, or at least a lot of classes, a discover effect. Like you know, I know a guy for warriors, Jaina below for rogues. Paladins have a light and darkness. Yeah. Um, shamans are getting finders keepers. So they're going with that theme a little bit everywhere, except they're being a bit cautious with what they're giving shaman. And I think like it's fine that they don't get a super good card. One of the things that this does, by the way, that I like though, is that it's actually not too bad as a one of in control shaman. Like it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. mind it there as a one of. Yeah. Well, the one thing about this card is that there's really not that many overload cards. Mm -hmm. Think yeah. about it. So it, you. If you really want something specific in the deck, seven, seven. <laughs> then you can, <laughs> yeah, or you know, if you really want burn, you're probably going to find burn because there's a lot of burn spells that are overload. Yeah. So if you want, if it'd probably be good in like if Malago Shaman ever becomes good, yeah, Finders yeah, Keepers is going to sure. be super sick. And uh, also, I think it'd be good in um, like Nasha said in Control Shaman because there's a lot of turns where. If you're planning on like unlocking your crystals the next turn, anyway, mm -hmm. like if you elemental destruction late in the game, or if you use a lot of overload late in the game as a controlly shaman, which the, it seems like that with the new cards is trying to be pushed, mm -hmm. then it's it's a good like little spell to add on to your floating mana, and then unlock your crystals next turn anyway. So, um, it's it's not good on paper, but I think it's gonna find. A home somewhere in uh somebody's deck somewhere i, I, I think I, I think i'm the most optimistic out of all you guys about this card because i i tend to kind of going a little bit further down that route tj where i think it's a very flexible card you can you can find card draw you can find burn you can find giant minions uh board clears from 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 uh overload cards so Getting a chance to pick from three and not just get a random one is a pretty big deal. Well, that, you know? That's a plus. Yeah, it's definitely a pretty big deal. You can only get one Dust Devil. <laughs> but I, I yeah, think it's only true. good, yeah. really, in Control Shaman, because you want all the yeah. burn for Control Tools. You want the AoE. You can want one single late game threat. Like it, that, I think that's where it shines the most of mm, all the decks. I think it's pretty good right with now. Trog right now. Mm -hmm. I think even, yeah. I mean, sure. I, I always have this dream of Unbound Elemental, so it's like, I'm going to try it regardless with this stupid card, too. But, well, the one um, thing about, like, aggressive shamans, or even, like, mid-range shaman, is they always want to be, they always want to be doing board. Mm -hmm. Something that's was planned you know yeah. they always want to be yeah. they don't want to really deviate from a game plan based off of you know new information <laughs> uh true uh, but at the same that's time like, that's you know it, it seems it sounds like a weird thing to say but you know that's what mid-range decks are uh they don't really want to f have something that is an unaccountable variable so i think it's only in the extremes in like super aggro maybe or control mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it finds a place to fit in with the the current, like, mid-range oh, shaman. Oh, definitely not the current one. The current one doesn't even, yeah. like, reward you that much for overload anyway, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it would have to be... I think if I were to use it, it would be definitely much more of a, um, an aggro or your typical, you know, minion-heavy aggro type of deck, more so than what we see right now with the totems. And I mean, it's just... It's a dynamic deck right now, even though it's, it's mid-range shaman or whatever. Um, okay, moving on. Jade Claws, another overload oh. card. Another weapon, too, for Shaman. Uh, it's two mana, two, two, or, or two attack, two durability. Rare card, Battle Cry Summon, a Jade Golem. So this is, God. again, another one of these cards. This card is broken. Turn one Spirit Claws, <laughs> turn two Jade Claws, jeez. Power creep. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So, Obviously. Um, uh, you know, definitely going to be in a Jade Golem type of deck, but then you're going to have to make that decision. The one that you just brought up, TJ. Like, do you play Spirit Claws or do you play Jade Claws? Uh, if you play both, then you have to, you know, you can't play them back to back because you're just going to be, you know, replacing one with the other. So to actually play these efficiently, even cl remotely close to each other, you have to wait two or three turns. So, uh, what do you guys think? Good card, bad card, Noxious? I'm struggling to evaluate it because on one end, I want to say it's like just a good one of in mid-range Shaman, okay, even if you don't play Jade Golem because you don't have to push it. 
Because it still curves like Stormforged Axe instead of Totem Golem when you whiff on the opener and you have just Trog. Yeah. Um, and it's like it's like it's always fine. It summons minimum a one one. That's fine. Like even if it said, if it read Battle Cry summon a one one, uh, whatever the fuck you want to call that minion, then you know, do you play a two mana two two weapon that summons a one one? Like that's the question ultimately that I ask myself out of Jade Golem decks, because the Jade Golem tools they have are like Jade Lightning this, and uh, the seven drop. One of the upsides of this card is that it actually creates a curve in Jade Golem decks because you've got Jade Claws on two, turn three, you yeah. do whatever else you want. Four, sure. you've got Jade Lightning. Then you transition five, six, do something else. Seven, you drop your next Jade Golem tool. So it creates a natural curve to the Jade Golem deck. Uh, but like, I feel like Shaman just doesn't want a Jade Golem. Like on average, you get to your seven drop and your Jade Golem is going to be what a three, three. Like from what I've looked at, it's like a three, three or a four, four at most. Um, it, that just doesn't seem appealing. So if it's yeah. his play, I, I don't know. I feel like it's not going to be... Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's going to be in Jade Golem, but not going to be the strongest there. I yeah, think. I definitely don't see Shaman ever getting to those wacky, like, 10-10 Jade Golems. Uh, I mean, they don't they don't have that, that Jade Idol <laughs> that allows you to, to, you know, get a lot of Jade Idols up to, to really ramp up to something late game. So I think you're right there with um, Noxious. It's never going to be crazy big, but I don't know. Dan, what do you think, man? I, I like the card. Uh, it's even in the worst case scenario, it's only a little worse than Stormforged Dax. And mm -hmm. I think if you're playing the Jade Golem deck, it's 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 terrific because it doesn't take much to get tremendous value from it. Even one Jade Golem, then all of a sudden it's a two-two summoning a two-two, and that's yeah. pretty darn good, I think, uh, because it it helps the shaman survive to power up the golems. I don't know if it'll work, but. But, but, but between there, they need the weapons to, to get them to that point. Right. DJ? I don't know. I'm a little bit torn on this card just because <clears throat> when do you, at least uh, until Totem Golem's gone. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. when yeah. do you, most of the time you're just going to mulligan it away for Totem Golem. And then you'd you'd always rather have totem golem almost always rather have totem golem and then i guess there's room for like well if you totem golem on two and you have two men next turn jay calls is perfect but well i i think the then you're not really curbing anything on four and you'd rather just have the second totem golem i don't know i mean it's it's an it's another two drop that goes well with trog too so it, you know you're gonna get what uh, a two three and one one and you're probably removing whatever's on the board that, that's a pretty good start that's not totem mm -hmm. golem, right? So well, um, totem totem is also a good just pressing like, totem, right? On two, so like, I I don't know. So here's my question: If this card read Battle Cry Summon a Searing Totem, would it be good? No. no. With the, with the uh, with Tink from below. See, that's the question. Because if you if your answer to that is no, then it's just not going to be played in mid range. I think it's fine. Yeah, it's like, I think it's, it's fine too. Like, I, I look at it as like this is I, this allows you to reintroduce Arjun's Choir and Shaman, right, as a one drop, uh, um, yeah. because it lets you get like you can treat the two the claws as like an abusive sergeant in yeah. a way because you get a one one body on the board, you have two attack from it, and so you curve and you keep the weapon for the following turn. So aggro can actually use this in a weird way. Um, well, one one thing is that uh, Shamans have been getting very blue, um, so I'm gra yeah. I'm glad to see Blizzard give them some green. I'm really glad. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that. That's about the strongest argument <laughs> the right there. Best analysis. I agree. Right there. I absolutely agree. All right, let's move on. Uh, four mana Lotus Illusionist, an epic card, three five body. After this minion attacks a hero, transform it into a random six cost minion. All right, TJ, what do you think? Uh, six drops are pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Moonglade Portal, you know, it's. That's the other random six cost minion, and there's a lot of good six drops. You know, like average six drop is like around a five five. There's some ones that can swing a game really heavily, like Sunwalker. Um, but uh, and also, you think how often a, a a three five, a four mana three five, has the opportunity to attack face, and that's a lot. You know, like four mana three fives have the opportunity to attack face a lot, but how often do you want to attack face <laughs> with a three five? And leave, you know, whatever minions they played on four, whatever they played on four. It has a chance to punish, but it's like, where does this, where does it fit? And you know what? I've made that my goal in life. 
this I tell, I'm telling you, where, where is, is everything fits? It fits in an evolved shaman. That's where it fits. You play the, it's, you play there. It becomes a six. You make it a seven. Seven drops are bad though. Seven drops I are agree. worse than six drops. I no, agree. but this whole thing, like, you're not even like attacking board though. It is wind fury. I, I actually like, really like the card because it creates this really in, difficult dynamic. You know, how try in here trying to figure out how to even play this card. So actually, I think this is a type of card you play as a board control tool in the early game, and then you turn mm -hmm. it into a threat in control decks and control shaman late game. Does that make that's, sense? That's uh, what I yeah. Okay. You, you, you sure. like you kill a minion early on, and then you force them to trade into it in order right. to not like turn a three right. one yeah. into a six drop. It's a taunt yeah. basically. Yeah, it's almost like a yeah. It's engine. <laughs> most I think most of the time it's just a sanction with a mm -hmm. pseudo taunt on it. Right. Because even if a 3-5 has the opportunity to attack quite a bit, typically, there's a definite motivation to not let this card attack. So I don't think it will trigger as much as you would want it to. I think mm -hmm. I don't I don't see this being a huge card, to be honest. I, I think I might play it in control shaman in conjunction with the water speaker. Like I don't mind it. I think it, it creates like a mid-range control deck for shaman. When you have these like four four drops together, um, you have something to do with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you can make a more minion heavy, uh, like control ish shaman deck. Yeah. Okay. Next up is a Jin Jin Yu Water Speaker four mana, a rare card three six battle cry restore six health and overload one. So I actually see this card as a way to fill some of the gap that's going to be gone when healing wave is gone. But um, oh god no! But overload one. I, I was actually surprised they put the overload on it. Actually, well, four uh, mana three six is really good. I know, but like, four yeah, mana three yeah. six is like a good <laughs> bot. And then slap yeah. on restore six health. Yeah, like look at the hit that mini bot took for it to restore eight health. Like she was a five mana three yeah. three, and this thing, this guy's a four mana three six. You know, if it didn't have overload, then I'd be like, whoa. No, I mean, the reason, what, I mean, dude. it's not really so much the value as much as like making a four drop another like overload one. Because I don't know, especially with like wide eyes next, right? Like we're following it up with a five drop. It, it's going to be hard to play this card um, and then have to take a hit the following turn uh, mm -hmm. just from a sample and a tempo. So that, that's one of the things. Is that's what you like about it? Okay, that's why. Yeah, I because don't. you can play more four drops. That's why the Lotus Illusionist looks better in that context, or even mm -hmm. the the Fire Guard Destroyer. Like, if you want to build a yeah. lineup of four mana three sixes, they both have Overload, right? Destroyer and this one. Yeah. And you can guarantee a four mana three six with an upside in in both cases. So I think in like if your four cost curve is filled there, then your turn four is a four drop, your turn five is a four drop, your turn six is a six drop. So you can skip five. Uh, like shaman so much like to do actually like they just kind of fill turn five until good stuff happens yeah yeah it works well with unbound elemental too <laughs> yeah it actually does one of these days i feel man. like i've heard that before <laughs> one of these days with every card, <laughs> every card every card of you it's like oh my god oh man unbound. Like, it's people a dream doing flamers basis are like hmm four minutes seven seven build around unbound good. <laughs> but one thing's for sure it's really good with unbound elemental hell yeah boy hell every single yeah. time you're like unbound is not a good card dude yeah. stop stop pushing it it's not good enough it needs to come in with its own overload and self buff well given that there's a dragon one that just automatically busts itself <laughs> once at, at three mana it's it's you know it's definitely not not good compared to that but do you think the you think this card is enough to still allow for shaman to have control i think um, so okay. it's 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 a it's a good card uh because mm -hmm. control shaman looks for ways to survive and this at least can help clear the board a little better so that the health is meaningless it's not like it's gonna it's not like a restore six spell in which case it doesn't do anything to the board and then it just delays your death by a turn i think it's a cool card yeah, I think it's definitely going to be useful. Um, okay, moving on. Wide eye, white eyes. It's a legendary first legendary we're doing today. Five drop, five five body with taunt. So yet another, five, you know, just a, a five five with taunt that Shaman can play with. Death rattle, shuffle the storm guardian into your deck, and the storm guardian guys is a five mana but a ten ten taunt that you can play at a later time. So uh, there's definitely mixed reactions with this card. Some people think it's way too slow. Some people think it's actually really, really good. Uh, yeah, what are your what are you guys' thoughts, Dan? Oh, I love the card. Um, I think Blizzard has kind of learned that to play slow cards, you actually have to have a stat line that compensates to some degree for, for the, the time you've lost. And I think one of the problems we've seen in a lot of the expansions is 
so many of the slow cards and the slow styles don't have that real payoff at the end. And I think Blizzard's getting, I think this is the kind of stat line that you need for a card like this to be playable. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's good. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't think it's tremendous or anything. Okay. Mm, it's really good with Unbound Elemental. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, thoughts? Too slow? Good? TJ, what do you think? I think it's just, I mean, it's just pretty good. That's it. Yeah. It's nothing like too fancy. Uh, I don't think it'll be like an auto-include. But, you know, pretty much everybody is going to try and put this into most Shaman decks at first. Yeah. It's pretty good in control because it's slower, but... Like it's also pretty good for mid range because it's just a five man of five five taunt. A taunt, yeah. And... It's a flying top deck, I guess, because that's one of those things. Yeah. Is like, I look at this card and I say, if this didn't have taunt, it just like trash to your delete from the game, gone. But because it has taunt and it forces itself to die, I, I like I'll, I'll I'll accept it. Is I'll kind of how I look it. at this. I don't think the card wow. is super exciting. I don't think a five man ten ten is any better than a four man a. Like, it could be a 30-30 for all I care. Like, if it sticks and you hit, you win. Like, it doesn't matter that it's a 10-10 over 12-12 or 15-15. I just... Oh, come on. There's a big difference between a 30-30 and a 10-10. Yes, there is. There's Shadow or Death. <laughs> you sound like Ray now. There's it. no difference between a 30-30 and a There 10 -10. is none in this game. I'm sorry, dude. Like, a 10-10 yeah. or 20-20, there's no difference. I mean, if I Death agree. Was, if Deathwing was a 30-30, it'd be an auto-include in most decks. In Deathwing? <laughs> Yeah, that one was so a It's a one hit include. kill for sure after if it lives, where a 10 10's not, right? It's literally I mean, on turn 10, they have to have removal or they lose. Now, now while I agree that there's a limited utility towards stats past a certain point, I think with the taunt, the stats become a little better. Simply right, because that's yeah, the that's whole too. reason the taunt it's is viable really at all. Good. Yeah. I think it's interesting in a Nazoth deck too. You know, maybe maybe Shaman can run Nazoth with this and get two extra giant cards with it. You know, just yeah, to maybe that's use. very slow. Yeah. I think this <laughs> card would be. An, yeah. I think the this this card would be auto include if it was Battle Cry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, God, sure. yes. Yeah, you sap because this, no problem. <laughs> brand baby, brand too. Yeah, yeah, because then you could brand. Well, brand, I don't think it's. I uh, know brand is still around for a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. four months. Yeah, yeah, four months. Um, but if even just being able to slam White Eyes <laughs> into Storm Guardian next turn. <laughs> yeah so is it going to be like a one in 20 but hey i mean that's the beauty like like dan was saying right this, this isn't arc arc mate or um uh, just reform right uh this isn't where it's like okay you're playing on nine and then you have to wait an entire you have to use your entire turn just to play that next card you can actually do stuff with storm guardian the following turn so mm -hmm. um yes yeah, it's, it's pretty big swing if you can get it off but um you can play unbound elemental yes you can you can play unbound elemental and your finder's keeper and then your your you know jinyu water speaker your too there you go just way too good right, right man exactly. just too good <laughs> all right let's move on going from shaman gonna bring up some rogue cards now yeah rogue sweet i'm kind rogue. of excited yeah that's just because stuff bounces and i'm like yeah i like bouncing cards you like you like balance, balance, balancing cards. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I'll let's start off with the first one. Two mana, two three. Gadgetzan Ferryman, rare card. Speaking of bounce combo, return a friendly minion to your hand. <laughs> all right, let's hear. Let's hear some of these decks now, TJ. Here we go. Let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. Do you okay, have any thoughts on this? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Then. No, actually, Nox. Why don't you start? Actually, I, me or Nox? Yeah. Nox, Nox, go. Okay, sure. So I, I think this card is better than Brewmaster in decks that play a hyper aggro. Like, imagine hyper aggro is a bunch of one drops. Some of those battle cries you want to reuse, some you don't. Um, sometimes you can't play Shadow Step in those decks because it doesn't offer a board control in any in any way. And I think Gaddis and the Ferryman fits the one mana board flood, like Zoo Rogue, like the hyper aggro rogue um, that can sometimes zoo you down. I don't think it's like the fact that it offers redundancy with brewmaster so you can play four of them if you really want to go crazy on bounce instead of shadow caster is not too bad it's still a really bad minion um but worst case scenario it's a two mana two three like I, I don't i don't see all the hate for the card i think it's an okay one i think it should have been common though um doesn't feel like like in arena okay. for instance like i i should i would have rather had that in shadow rager okay you know? yeah, yeah you'll see this in arena i mean because you see youthful brewmaster in arena Mm -hmm. uh, but 
the thing is, every every expansion, there's always like some crazy battle cry, and someone always tries to stick like a youthful brewmaster in the deck, and it never really quite works out because a lot of the times you just have a three two that sometimes you don't want to bounce something back. Uh, it's it's almost filler. It's interesting. I can see a few kind of edge cases in which you would want to play this, but it's it's an arena card, I think. DJ. Oh boy, I'm 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 getting ready. Well, <laughs> the thing about this card is that there's more battle cries being put into the game. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot more. Yeah. Like every time they make new cards, it feels like there's more and more battle cries. I mean, just look at statistics. Fifty percent of the cards that we're looking at on the screen right now are battle cries. So fifty percent of the cards in the game uh, must battle be battle cries. <laughs> must be battle cry. Yeah. Based on the statistics mm-hmm. of our conversation. Um, I think that this card is a lot better than Brewmaster because yes. of the fact that it, you have to have a combo for it. Um, and I think that this card could definitely see play in constructed decks. I haven't uh, taken a look at it too much um, just because um, like it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around it because there's just so many battle cries and I'm never good at predicting decks. But this card is definitely going to be getting wild. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Because I'm mad because there's even more battle cries in in wild. But uh, like being able to, the only thing that I see about this is um, a lot of people confuse combo with battle cry. Um, and you know, I've I've seen people s- s- saying things like, um, you know the co- the co- the double combo effects. So like you, if you combo something and you bring it back, you know you you have to wait another turn before you can combo it again. Usually, like Edwin, you, you're not gonna be able to bounce Edwin back very much. It's not like Shadowcaster where you can get a additional one. But with Shadowcaster, be good. I don't know. I think this card will see play in constructed, um, but I don't think that uh, it'll be like a staple in any super hyper competitive decks. But I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the things that people do with both Brewmasters, Gadzin Ferryman. And Goya. Yeah. Goya, for I, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of some crazy things. I mean, we definitely have seen the infinite kind of shadow caster decks that are, are mm-hmm. amazing, right? And they're they're fun as, they're fun as crap to play and very difficult to play, too. Well, so, um, if, you, if you look at, uh, like, even the card on the end here, the Lucky Do Buccaneer. Yeah. Yes. You can make that thing pretty big. <laughs> it's unplayable point is like it's a two minute two three that has a very niche effect and it might work but for the most part it probably it probably won't do like a tremendous amount of, of work for rogue yeah right? i mean th- it's the rogue is interesting because they they keep I, I think they i think one this is like one of the mini themes you know just like returning stuff or trying to enable battle cries that are super powerful you know and things like that or copying you know just existing minions or whatnot but God, it still doesn't fix the issue with like tempo for for rogue, you know, and that that's the only thing I would say about that. It's cool to have extra brewmasters, but you know, it's like I'd almost rather see it in in more like like you said, common or just not a non class card than than actually having it just as rogue. Um, but anyways, going on to the next one, let's just move on. Uh, Shadow Rager, three mana, five one stealth. Some more ragers, yes, uh, but. The thing is, like, we should talk about the next one too, which is the four mana shadow sunset rare four four battle cry gives stealth minions plus two plus two. So there's obviously a theme too with the rogue that they're introducing here. We're gonna have stealth minions, which I always thought was kind of on the the fringe or on the fence with with being non interactive minions. <laughs> but maybe this is a way to help tempo with with rogue. Um, but it's obviously a theme for them. So now now they're even buffing stealth only minions, which is kind of interesting. Uh, which has led to even counter cards like revealing stealth minions, what we'll talk about later. What do you think about stealth generally? And then what do you think about Shadow Rager? Stealth is just, it's never been that powerful an effect. Uh, I mean, there's a few cards where it takes a big advantage of it. But the problem is that a really good stealth card would suddenly get way too valuable, as you saw yeah. uh, in a few occasions. I mean, Shadow Rager, it's just, it's going to be played as much as the other Ragers. Because really the only difference between Shadow Rager and, say, Patient Assassin is going face. Because Patient Assassin, you can look as do infinite damage to a minion. And that doesn't get played. Okay, sure. 
it, the the benefit of stealth is usually like hiding something that you want to live for another turn because of an effect that it has. Uh, even if you look at the stealth minions that are just played because of their stats, like Stranglethorn Tiger, Stranglethorn Tiger still you want it to live because a lot of times it's a beast. So the decks that play it, you know, beast uh, or hunters and uh, beast druids mm-hmm. are the two that you know come to mind the most. They want it to live because it has the second effect that it's also a beast. Or like you know, if you stealth a gadget <laughs> action here or things like that, um, and those things are aren't don't happen enough to where you could see it being played. They look good next to each other. You're like, oh, Shadow Rage or a turn three stealth minion, and then Shadow Sensei a turn three or turn four minion that buffs stealth. But I think you almost always have Jungle Panther in that situation. Yeah, that's the biggest the stack comparison. distribution. Yeah, but it doesn't die to like a, a one man effect. It won't die to Maelstrom Portal or Whirlwind or Ravaging Ghoul or uh, Swipe or anything like that. So. I don't think, and Jungle Panther also has a beast tag. So, <laughs> in a situation where you do want beast, if you're playing a Menagerie deck or something like that, Shadow Ranger doesn't even have a tag. So, I think that this card is just worse than Jungle Panther in most situations. Yeah. And in every other situation, the one damage doesn't really make up for anything. Yeah. I think the only way that there might be consideration, and I still think that there's a small percent chance that, that this card may be viable if they add more stealth buffing type of um, minions that are cheap too. It'd have to be like a one mana buff all. I mean, if you could buff this thing to a 6-2, I mean, that's that's a lot different story like than a 4 Or you could have a 5-3 Jungle Panther. Five, three jungle yeah, Panther. Five, I mean, no, no, what I'm saying is like having, like you want more stealth minions, like in, in addition to like Jungle Panther and... Oh, and that's so like I think a, Silent Knight like is a, the best case scenario. Shaku and Silent Knight are the two best ones. Yeah, like, that kind of no thing best. too. So it'd be kind of... It'd be pretty crazy to imagine, but a rogue deck that has like 10 stealth minions or something like that. Um, I don't know if they're trying to go that route, but it, it's it's tough because stealth is a powerful thing. And the reason why we haven't had powerful stealth minions is because stealth is a powerful thing. So um, it, it's going to be, I don't know if they can balance that into something that's actually going to be viable and not not broken. So um, it'd be interesting. Shadow be- Sensei, you know, whoop, go ahead. It's going to be right. Morose's time to shine. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be interesting. Morose at 3-3, baby. I don't think Morose being buffed is much of a big deal. Because, like, you still want to keep him stealthed so he never dies. So, I don't know, man. Well, it makes it hard to kill him. But So, wait a couple I don't know. more I, turns I to kill him. Meta, I think 3-mana 2-2, 3-mana 2-3 is where it does, like, with Shaku oh. and Silent Knight. Am I still muted? Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. I can hear you now. Yeah. Hear you now. <laughs> oh, no. What I was saying is you would need a lot more synergy with stealth minions to make something like this playable. Because yeah. what's the dream? You just get plus two, plus two, and you need to have this card to do it. Yeah. You would need... You can't just do it for one... Yeah, it needs to be like all. It needs to be an all type of thing. Yeah. I mean, they've done it with Grammy Go- Goons decks or cards. They need they need to do something like that, I think, with the stealth ones just to, to have some viability. Uh, which leads down to the, you know, again, like if they don't make stealth strong and stealth is a theme for rogues, then all these cards are, are not going to be played it's and it like doesn't Beast help Druid. rogue, you know, it's, yeah, so kind of like Beast Druid, exactly. Yeah, um, but that's fine. I don't like, I don't want Beast Druid to be good because as long as Menagerie Warden is in the meta, it, it's, it's already good, buddy. Shit out of me, but, <laughs> it's um, already good. It's just not better than Malagas. Um, right. I think Malagos Druid might struggle when Raven Idol goes away. I think that deck is just dead. Um, Living Roots and Idol going away just kills that deck. Hmm. Yeah, I've looked at it like a dozen ways, and I yeah. can't even like. There's no replacement for those cards yet. Mm, Jade's not yeah. bad for J- Jade Idol replacing. I don't know, but Raven maybe isn't isn't so Sh- terrible. Jade Golem Malagos or Jade Golem straight up. I mean, maybe. it's just it's just spells, and you, yeah, I mean, you can just. I don't think it's a terrible replacement for it because you can still okay. do the Arcane Giants and stuff, but. Um, I mean, we still have one more set until they go. Yeah, away. exactly. Mm-hmm. And we still have yeah. the cards to come in the future. Uh, all right, Lucky Doe Buccaneer. So, um, you know, we were talking about it. It's an uh, uh, epic card, 5-5 five, five pirate, 6 mana. Battlecry, if your weapon has at least 3 attack, gain plus 4, plus 4. And 3 attack, pretty easy to get with, uh, with, with Rogue, with Deadly Poison, and just with your hero power. So I'm, I can see this being a 9-9 nine, nine very, very often. That's pretty damn good. But when, but when it's not a 9-9. Nine, nine. <laughs> when it's not a 9-9. Nine, nine, yeah. It's very if it started solid. at 6-6 six, six and it became plus 3, plus 3, I'd be like, sure. When it's a 5-5 five, like five, five baseline, it's a bit of a different story. But, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Uh, well, I think that rogues have like definitively the best pirate cards in the game now. Yeah. I could see like a yeah. mid range pirate rogue deck being okay. You know, South Sea Squid Face synergizes yeah. pretty well with this card. Just South Sea Squid Face is not that great of a card anyway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, rogues also have just been getting a sprinkling of pirate cards in the past couple of sets. Swash Burglar uh, is a pirate card. People will often forget about that because it's not played in pirate decks. It's just played as a draw one, one to get yeah. random spells. Yeah. Um, and they have Buccaneer, which came a few sets ago, which, you know, is a good early way to buff your, your weapon. And they also have Shady Dealer, which yeah. can be a lot of power early on. I mean, that's a three mana. 5 4. Yeah, that's a card that's just been waiting to be five, good. Four, yeah. Like, for, for 5 4. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, like some type of uh, pirate rogue that plays similarly to uh dragon warrior yeah, exactly uh where yeah. this is, sort of fits the bill of dragon did crusher in the deck you know you could even play like an assassin's blade because turn five assassin's blade into lucky new buccaneer is not too bad and you know assassin's blade could allow you to play your powerful minions while being able to control the board which is you know what dragon warrior does mm -hmm. so i can see like sort of a uh, that type of mid-rangey aggressive-ish pirate rogue being very similar deck to dragon warrior yeah uh, with this card in it yeah, I think that's a good parallel for sure. It'd be great to see that if we could just get a mid range, mid range value rogue. That's like everybody's dream forever now. It's well, <laughs> people don't remember oh, the yeah. days of uh, like the defender of Argus. Argus when was, we remember, yeah, remember yeah. that. We were in, in the freaking beta. Do you world. really want that back? Oh, but gosh. mid range rogue or tempo rogue used to be one of the most oppressive decks in the game when yeah, you know, novice engineer was a one two and Defias was like what a, a Defias was a two 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 like oh two three two one two three and a two one that's what it was gosh coin Defias you were you were set yeah. Uh, yeah, much. that was that was really nightmarish. All right, let's go into Warlock now. Warlock, uh, obviously a lot of demons being, or at least the demon theme being added, were stressed this uh, release. And the first one is a demon. It's a three mana, zero seven. No threat there with from the tag. Street Trickster. Common spell damage plus one. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think of this card? <laughs> you think this card uh, is good on its own? Good maybe from some of these other cards that actually summon demons or whatnot? Just with the removal? Mm, not enough spells. Really? Not yeah, I did a bunch where... of spells, right? Like... This is not for just warlocks. This is for everyone. Yeah, this, this for, is sorry, this is for card. everyone. Oh, this is a neutral card. No, I shouldn't. I, yeah, I think I added. Warlock yeah, card. I added this with yeah, the great. warlock group. Yeah, it's bad in warlock probably, yeah. but it's good elsewhere. I mean, yeah, warlock doesn't like... have the, the the burn to do that. Yeah, I thought true. I saw the pur so I thought I saw the purple border. My bad. Yeah. Oh me well, too. then <laughs> uh, I still. It's all right, ish. I still don't. I mean, maybe you've played in priest actually. Mm. A priest playing demon. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Demon priest. Yeah, do you get some inner fire? fire? Come on, noxious. It's like a it's the inner fire, baby. The I inner... mean, if you get Doomslayer on two, followed with this, it's pretty sweet. Like you just you nail, you just draw down a zero seven, and they don't want to play into it. You know how Justicar Shaman feels when they draw spell damage over spell damage over spell damage. Um, like there's a. Oh, I don't know how. No, it feels. I actually don't. <laughs> you've, never, you've never faced Control Shaman doing that. Dude, it is the worst oh, feeling in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I it's the worst it feeling in the world, and it's like I can't play into anything. You play, you play a six-six, and the guy has like four spell damage totems. You can't even like think about playing. Yeah, the, that's crazy. The, the thing is, is so, it's not costing him a card every time he does it. It's right, not costing right. him. It's it's only costing him the slot of just a card, which has other value. Whereas this right. card literally does nothing else. It doesn't contest the board. It doesn't, you know. It only it only has spell damage attached to it. So yeah. and it's I don't think it's good enough as a combo card because like Kobold or Blood Mage would fill a combo deck even better because they're cheaper and they yeah. also have a body and of course Blood Mage also has the draw effect and uh, Evolve Kobold is only one mana more and like plus two spell damage is huge, especially when you're comboing multiple spells together. So it's like e yeah. yeah, we need to get yeah. like I, I, the way I envision this card being used is if there's ever a critical mass of these types of cards where, yeah. you know, dragon fire potion, fell fire potion, clean up the, the the board in the mid game, but this card coming down basically saves you seven health, and if they don't deal with it, you get a good clear, and if you don't sure. get a good clear now, you're guaranteed to get one in the mid game, so they have to basically like address it, kind of like Doomsayer is how I look at this. You you almost can't let this live, 
any yeah. more than you can let Doomsayer live. So it's like an extra neutral healing tool mm. in the early game, and it's got some spell damage applications later. I don't think it's great. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, Doomsayer is um, definitely way way better just because and and right, it just kills ways. things if it lives. Yeah, yeah so. exactly, and it's cheaper too. Uh, all right, let's move on. So. This is Warlock card three mana five five demon unlicensed apothecary epic. Whenever you summon a minion, deal five damage to your hero. So uh, you get a nice big body at, at three mana, but damn, you're gonna be be taking some damage if you want to play yeah, something behind it too. It's um, it, it it's a tricky card because simply, yeah. I mean, anytime you have a, a five five for three mana, you have to at least think about the card because that's yeah. a great stat line. But the problem is, like, an aggressive Warlock deck that really wants to get that early and doesn't mind taking the hit, they want to be playing more cards. They don't want to be doing nothing. You, I, I, don't, I don't think this is going to work, to be honest. Mm -mm. Yeah, dealing Pit more Lord's damage to played. yourself. <laughs> deal, deal, dealing more damage to yourself than you're it, actually giving to your opponent. It sounds like a... I mean, you can play it on three and... Blast like, Crystal Potion on four. Sure, you don't have to play sure. it. Sure. But then you're so limited, and you're opponent can just leave it up, and then just like never kill it. <laughs> so, and then you can't really play minions. Um, so against like aggressive decks, you're gonna be like in a race to, like, kill off your unlicensed apothecary, it's while like they're just tempo. hitting you in the face. Yeah. And then, and in, in, if you're if you're playing a zoo deck anyway, you're not gonna play this because you're just gonna kill yourself. And uh, in like slower decks, Pit Lord isn't played, and that's like a one time thing. You just, you know you just take the damage and mm -hmm. then move on with your life. Um, and that doesn't, that's never seen play. So I just, five damage is a lot. It doesn't yeah. really fit anywhere. Uh, maybe there's going to be like a, a kill yourself deck. <laughs> I think it, it's, it's really <laughs> good. It's at the you game. win if you kill yourself. If everything gets pushed out, like if most aggro decks get pushed out because of stuff like volcanic potion, then you have to start playing beefier dudes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. To get okay. them to hit then sure. Like I can see this yeah. being played. And then, like, the Crystal Weaver isn't even that bad. Like, it's not yeah. an amazing card, but it's okay. And if you play enough demons early, like, the sixth one drops, you've got the M Gang boss on three, which is a demon. You've got this guy who's on three. The problem is it says whenever you summon a, de a minion. It's not like whenever you, you play. So M Gang boss being on the board kills you. The guy playing Leroy deals 10 damage to your face because you get two whelps. It's like, oh, well, I guess this yeah, is just turn three. play or bust. Like, you play this on three or you just don't play it. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's so you could play Flame Imp on one, Coin Unlicensed Apothecary on two, and then and play, another, one. And play, another, play one. another one on three, <laughs> and then on four you play lower. Flame Imp, and you die. Uh, Wrath Guard, and you you're dead. Oh, oh no! I, I, wow! I, I like I like that combo. <laughs> now it's, it's amazing. We're talking it's amazing. a really 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 slow headlock because even. The classic hand lock where you're just tapping all the time. It, the the Reno lock is a, is a different. It, it has earlier cards than that. If you had a really really late hand lock deck type deck, I think you might be able to play one of these. And it but... enables molten giant guys. Totally enables it. <laughs> I mean, it it's enables back. shadow flames for cheap if you want to play them. I guess instead of Sa Sergeant Sally, but I don't know. Maybe. You can play it on three in the in, in the hand lock deck or a Reno lock, and then four you shadow flame it, and you're happy. It it's enables okay. losing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Maybe there'll be a card that does damage to your opponent based on the damage you take or something. I thought there was yeah, a legendary we were gonna get. Yeah, this game. something like we'll that. We'll get the opposite of of the of the. Uh... Of the priest card, we'll get a card that right, says, right. "If you do damage to yourself this turn, it heals you." <laughs> Great, For that much. All right, so let's, go. Go. let's move on to Crystal Weaver. Uh, pretty straightforward. Four mana, five four body, which is good value. Battle cry, give your demon plus one plus one. Seems pretty good to me. You, uh, just to go back, you really think Elias's about to carry is that bad? It's it's yeah. kind of uh, mind fucking with me because I, I the stat line alone. I think it's. I think it's a cool it's, card. I actually like how it's designed. King Mukla played. Yeah, and King Mukla is actually. I think King Mukla is worse in in some ways. Well, yeah, but not by much, and it's not played. It's less of a risk too. I think King Mukla is. Okay. You so know, you, you either get advantage or you going trade. To revolve around. Yeah. Like, I guess if Hunter is good, the thing is like there's many decks in the meta that will come out that would just not be able to abuse your low health. Um, the issue is if Hunter is just the most broken thing ever. Then sure, that's probably not playable. 
You could play uh, what you're targeting. Like I could see this being good in like a tournament format where you isolate a deck. Could also play Lights Champion. <laughs> the silent <laughs> demon. Oh man! The I dream, mean, dude. you know, if it was less damage to your hero, I think it would be much. Uh, you could consider it more. Five damage is a lot, dude. I mean, y- you're not playing minions that can even deal five damage in some cases after this card. So you'll be doing more damage to yourself for the next two or three rounds, you know, and assuming that you keep these minions on the board. So it's okay. It's, if you it's start reducing the damage, it. though, it, the card gets way too good too quickly. Like sure, if it's but... like two damage to your hero, no, it would be an insanely good card. I mean, three every single time you play a minion. So you, you're basically every one of your minions is a flame imp. That's I don't know. I I think that that's balance a pretty decent balance for it. But... Uh, three, I don't know, dude. I play it every time, like five times in every deck. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, Crystal Reaver. We got we spent a lot of time on that one. Um, straightforward. Just you know, buff up the damage you get on the first four, three or four turns, right? A lot of cheap demons. Yeah, not, there's a lot of cheap demons, especially with like imp gang boss too. So it, it's um, it's pretty solid, and you get yeah, a five I mean, four can... to begin with too. That's solid. Yeah, a five four is fine, and it does yeah. have an upside. Yeah, for sure. Um, if there's a demon deck, it'll be in it. Yeah, I think there will be. But four mana we'll is also a slot that isn't really filled in zoo right now, so mm-hmm. uh, it could see play in zoo. Yeah, you know, there's. Especially now that Malchazar is Imp, you have mm-hmm. Flame Imp, you have Voidwalker, you have Imp Gang Boss, you have uh, any Imps like... that were summoned, you have... Uh... <laughs> Just, you've got what, Street no Trickster! Demons. You've got tr- Street boss. Trickster here. Unlicensed awesome, Apothecary. Exactly. Um... Yeah, sure. All make those. It a, let's make it a six six. There's a there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot. In this definitely a lot. All right, a blast blast crystal potion. Four mana spell. Common card. Destroy a minion in one of your mana crystals. So uh, another removal. I want to hear. I want to hear yeah. everyone's opinion on this one. All right. All right. I'm not sure really. I I hate. I mean, no one plays Felguard. That's what you call. I always forget his name. Even. Fel, um, oh, you mean destroying the three, a minion five. is a lot yeah. better than a three five. You need a really, really slow deck to do this, and it has to be late game. You can't do this early. I like this card. I, right up, just I definitely it's a tough like this one card. for me. I might not play Man. two, but I, I play. I play oh, one. No, you wouldn't play two. I play one. Mana crystals sure. are pretty friggin' important. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, we're talking. I mean, you could do it talking, on turn ten. We're yeah. talking. Otherwise. You know, we're talking control lock. You know, Reno lock or whatever. And I play this in Zoo. You play this in Zoo? All really? day, yeah, wow. dude. Wow. Uh-uh. Oh, come on, bro. Then you play the mirror and you just auto-lose. Oh, wow, sure. I wouldn't play it in Zoo. I'll, I'll, That's I, crazy. I play it one wow. up in Zoo for sure. This yeah, is like... It removes big taunts for sure. You know, it, it, it's good for it's that. It's so and, good. And your if your curve would be pretty low, too, right, with Zoo. <laughs> So, I think I'd rather play Fist of Draxus in Zoo than this. No, that's what I was considering, and I'm like, this is better. <laughs> I think I'd much rather <laughs> play Fist of Draxus. I mean, at least it's not that. random. Oh my god, okay. At least it's not a random. It's not I mean, random. A Fist of Draxus in your face. Yeah. Fist of Draxus, you can just slam on All right, so how about Control? Would you play this in a Control lock? Reno only. Yeah, yeah, yeah Reno is probably... Just yeah. because you get to like 26 cards, you're like, eh. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I, got, I mean, I unless got the, I mean, d- in any consideration, like Dread Steed or this. Let's just say Jay Gollum decks are awesome. Any consideration for for more of these cards? Even though Dread <laughs> Jay Gollum could cost one mana for your opponent. I like... think uh, Jay Gollum is a mechanic that you have to defeat by killing them quicker. Yeah. Than they kill you as opposed yeah, to because mm-hmm. they they're gonna have much better access to jade golems than you're gonna have to removal. Right. So if you spend four mana and a mana crystal removing one jade golem and then they just slam a jade claws on you and you're like, oh yeah. no. If, if, yeah, you're the jade claws. Off, if you're using this to kill off a ten ten, <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah. gonna have an eleven eleven the next turn. Exactly. What do you do? Exactly. And this is probably one of the last removals you play too. Yeah. Um okay, well, kind of we'll see how that one plays out cabal trafficker six mana six six body epic at the end of your turn add a random demon to your hand all right so you get to actually draw a demon uh it's kind of it's like emperor basically if this thing survives each turn you keep getting cards you keep getting getting demon cards and we have quite a few demons now i mean crawl like the next one we've seen unlicensed apothecary uh, street trickster pretty big array of demons 
So, uh, what do you guys think? Anybody? I think it's just good. I mean, yeah, just straight good. Yeah. It's made for cruel the unshackled and and cruel the unshackled, I guess. Yeah, and that uh, <laughs> makes it feel better. It's okay baseline, but yeah. it's like I don't really value the demons that much personally. I don't think they're like on average that powerful. Yeah, but... I don't either. Yeah. It, demon, there's actually a lot of weak demons. Yeah. If we remember mm -hmm. back to Bane of Doom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Bane actually. Doom it's was, about equal. Like, French played. I think it's pretty um, equal. Yeah. yeah, but the ones that are good are like situational, you know? Jaraxxus. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> Dual Draxis, but since there's more demons now, there's a lot more worse ones. Like if you get a, a flame imp or a void caller or like a pit lord or a fell guard or wrath guard or succubus. Mm -hmm. And we got a seven nine even, so you could get a cruel. You could get a cruel, and you could get a divisal enforcer, or dread infernal, um, the seven the big doom guard guy, whatever. You're some doom guy guard. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the fact that it is like emperor though. Like you have to kill this guy. Or he just continually draws. I definitely like yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know. Or you just say, fine, have your demons. Really? Wow. A 6-6 okay. is a pretty big deal, though, I guess. So, like, they, yeah. if it were 5-5, five, five, I'd tell you this card is trash. As a 6-6, six, six, I'm like, okay, this demands an answer. So, you know, it does have some merit in that way. It's like 6 yeah. mana draw a card and, well, draw a random card from a pool of cards that I don't even want to draw from. But yeah. uh, let's draw a card so I have something in my hand. And I think in that way... Maybe okay. it's a bit better. Okay, cool. Uh, and then, I mean, you were talking cruel already. Nine drop, seven, nine demon. It's a legendary battle cry. If your deck has no duplicates, so it's got to be arena lock. Summon all demons from your hand. Mm. Actually, Cabal Trafficker could screw your deck up, too, if you end up getting demons that are duplicates. No, you don't put them in your, in, no, you don't put them in in your deck. deck. You put them in your hand with the Cabal Trafficker. Oh, right, right, right. right. Okay. Cruel would yeah, still work, right. but I don't think right. this card is... I don't. I don't think it's good because no, your right? your deck has to have no duplicates. But like, what demons do you want to play that you wouldn't that you'd want to hold in your hand, right? For that long. <laughs> and then if you're, I mean, warrior you, you plays against you, just to, brawl the whole time too. So yeah, well, not even that. It's just like it. You you have to meet very specific conditions. It's not like Nizoth. It's where. No matter when you play them throughout the game, yeah. they're coming back. True. Uh, this is, they have to be in your hand and, you know, they have to be demons. Mm -hmm. And death rattles are better than demons, in my opinion. And also, like, you get to choose to put strong death rattles in your deck. Whereas with cruel, it's like you're going to weaken your deck by putting demons that may or may not be good. That probably would have been played earlier. You're really going to hold in game boss in your hand <laughs> until turn nine. So no. cruel can pull it out. Or you're just going to play it earlier on in the game. Sure, you can put like a Doom Guard in there and it's like, yeah, turn nine, seven nine with a charge. Hell yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, well, would you really have not wanted to play Doom Guard all the way up until that point? I think so in that deck, right? Like, I think that's where you'd play it. I've seen some people try to. I mean, you drop those cards Cruel, <laughs> potentially, if you. I mean, I think card. Cabal Trafficker, again, like I said, Cruel is just a card because Cabal Trafficker is a thing. Like, the mm -hmm. only reason Cruel yeah. seems remotely playable is because maybe that's your two of. Maybe Cabal Trafficker is your random two of in Reno, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay. I get a bunch of demons for free, and then I get, you know, to play Cruel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. What do, you, what do you think, Dan? I think you need a lot more demons with effects that you want to skip that are good. I, but since you're playing a single tech, then even those demons you're only going to have one of. I, I I don't think it works. I mean, it's quicker than Deathwing Dragon Lord with the dragons, but I don't. The think The dragons it's any are just so much stronger though. <laughs> they have such yeah. great in like effects, like you, Sarah. Just pull out Pit Lord, Felguard, Succubus. <laughs> Build around it, and then when you don't have that, then you're having to play those cards. Exactly. All right, let's do the let's do the the druid and the priest card. We're we're definitely taking a little longer than I thought. Let's let's start with the um, druid cards here. Celestial Dreamer. So um, Noxious, you saw this for the first time today, right? Yeah, Celestial Dreamer. I mean, I saw it yesterday, but I forgot to really review it and ponder what it would do in like in a in a game situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's... the more I look at it, the more I think it's. Okay, so you know the... What's the name of it? Okay, the Blubber Baron. Do you know what card I'm talking about? Yeah. Three mana, one, one. While it's in your hand, you get plus one, plus one for each battle card that you summon. Right. Um, so that's the Blubber Baron. I think this card is like a Blubber Baron. The only difference is you can play this on curve. Because Blubber Baron, in a deck with, like, hand buffs and, like, in Grimy Goons and with Doppelgangster, 
a job with double gangs on turn five. It's three battle cries you summon, so it gets plus three plus three. So it's a three mana really cheap buffed up card. Um, that's kind of how I look at this card. The only difference is this is playable on the curve. I still don't know that this is a card I'd play uh, in non Jade Golem decks. It feels more like a Jade Golem card where you have like an average Jade Golem, an auto Jade Idol, like a five five. That's pretty big, and then you slap this on top, and you get a five five on top of that. It's just like. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's definitely something you don't play on turn three, right? I mean, you don't want to, but even if you have to, it's not the in, in the world. But I mean, you're gonna play this more like on turn five, six, or seven to try to get yeah, a five. Yeah, I think right? six and seven is definitely yeah. where it's gonna be triggered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. It, it, I mean, it goes with golems. I just don't know if it's anything more than a pile of stats because three five five is amazing when it's early. When it's late, I mean, it's good, but if you're dropping Jade Golems everywhere, you might want to do something else with that three mana, a three mana spell that gives you that a... That gives you a no Jade Golem. Nine, nine be Jade Golem. Exactly. I mean, uh, you can play this with... You can play Ancient of War and then the Essence or something. You, you might play this on the Beast deck, maybe. Maybe with the Strangler, uh, Strang, yeah, Strangler Tiger or something like that. I don't know. I think that this card is actually really good um, yeah. because it's a... <clears throat> its stat line is, is not too much of a sacrifice as opposed to other like situational cards mm -hmm. um like a three mana three three is good like people play have been playing three mana three three tech cards for for yeah my control tech forever. and all the, yeah all those different ones and there's they're adding mm -hmm. more so i think that you know I, I think that a ball of stats for cheaper that's sort of you know designed to be have like a prerequisite is actually pretty good mm -hmm. uh, i mean you think about a lot of times like thing from below even though it has taunt, it's still kind of just a ball of stats, and it gets cheaper as the game goes on. So it's a, it is a more powerful card, but <laughs> yeah. like just throwing a five five onto the board next to other big stuff does a lot. Uh, the only thing that I'm concerned about is, you know, how many five plus attack minions are you going to be able to play? Druid doesn't really have many. Current druids don't really play any five attack minions outside of Arcane Giant. Uh, but even just throwing it next to an Arcane Giant would be pretty good. So I think this card is pretty good. The only thing is that. Will decks that have a specific plan be able to fit in an extra two, three, an extra two, three mana cards to uh, in the deck? Because we don't know how refined things are going to be. A lot of times, people have foregone playing really good cards just because the deck's too good by itself. And I think that Druid is getting a lot of really good cards. Okay, yeah, that, I think because it doesn't have taunt, it's not nearly as effective as things from below. But I could see it being played in the Beast Druid right now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's at least what, sure. four six cards that I could see it. You could possibly play turn five. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, it could be um, you know Savage, right? And the Savage Combatant, and that could you could actually get this out on turn five with a two drop too. So that could be pretty powerful. Uh, anyways, moving on, six drop Jade Behemoth Common three six Taunt Battlecry Summon a Jade Golem. So it's it's like Aya, but with no death rattle <laughs> uh, and I is pretty good already. So I think Jade behemoth is pretty solid. If you can get like a four, four from it or a five, five from it, pretty great stats for six mana. No, I, I know. I think it's fine in a Jade Golem deck. Obviously it's terrible outside of a Jade Golem deck, but yeah. really by the time you play this card in a Jade Golem deck, you're not summoning a one, one anymore. And if you are at that point where that's all you've done, you've probably lost anyway. Yeah, and so that's the thing about these are the turns, right? It's the Jade Behemoth and like the the six mana turn where you actually see that that giant swing. I, I think when when these Jade Golems start coming up, because you're investing all those early turns getting these cheap Jade Golems, and then when these are like the money turns, I think. And if you're not behind by a ton, you probably win the game at this point. And I just see that happening a lot in Jade Golem decks. Noxious, you don't seem to be as big on the the Jade Golem. Uh, or you're not thinking it think might be super Rogue powerful. Mashes it like if mm -hmm. the only drawback to that is like the caveat rather is that if Hunter is good, which it looks like it could be, then um, well, okay, Rogue might struggle more. But I think Jade Golem decks just get like priests and Jade Golems just get shut down by Rogue. I feel like they just kind of get destroyed. Maybe okay. I'm maybe I'm not like looking at this right because I mean Dragon Priest does have a bunch of taunts. And Rogue will use their like a lot of their removal on that kind of. This is a taunt uh, too. Base, right? And Priest will start. I mean, Druid will struggle against even J Dragon Priest, and we're talking like two fours with taunt against Druid on turn two is like, oh hi, 
Um, welcome to your one-on-one Jade Golems. Uh, tell him to do nothing <laughs> the rest of the next five turns as I drop three sixes and five sixes on curve. Like, Druid catches yeah. up on six and seven mana. Not even turns, just because they can Jade Blossom up there and Wild Growth, but I don't... Like, Jade Golems are great, don't get me wrong, but you need to give them time. And I think unlike um, the Grimy Goons, which, like, the hand buff Paladin, what the Grimy Goon deck does is it buffs... Like, it, it plays on curve, and the stuff that it plays just gets bigger. Druid does... Like, Jade Golem doesn't play on curve. It doesn't play Jade Golems on curve. It plays stuff... But it's not always bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until they finally get like a four four five five. Grimy Goons Paladin can go to like one one into three three into five five into seven seven and like this is turn six. Druid's like I drop a three six with a five five. Paladin's like Aldor Peacekeeper fuck you and I move in. So it's I, I don't think Jade Golem Jade Golem's like slower than Grimy Goons and it's slower than Dragon Priest, but it's still good for the tempo that it's trying to hit. Like that's the yeah, that's the big thing. All right. Uh, TJ, any any comments on this card or no? I uh, just have to see how good did Golem decks become. Yeah, uh, it's hard it's hard to see like see them in action because you know this is one of those decks where it's hard to theory craft because the synergies aren't necessarily synergies. It's like will this will the meta be too fast for Jade Golem to be able to yeah. ramp up? And uh, if so, then this card's not going to be good. But if Jade Golem decks are good, then if this is a three mana or a six mana three six with taunt and it summons even like four four that's really good so yeah uh, it's all gonna come down to how fast the meta gets i'm hoping it's good. not good <laughs> like because i think if it ends up becoming good it's very easy to play i i, I think ah. it'll generally it'll be easy to play it's it's gonna be like a thin decks right like if i Cthun want it to be good because i don't want too fast decks to be the the, the hearthstone i have to live with i don't well, want to be like rushed down for the rest of my life well, I mean, it can be it can be good, but not like universally good, like tier one good. Because if it's tier one good, that's all we're gonna see at every one I of these. I wouldn't mind events, it being Cthulhu so. good. Cthulhu good would be fine. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's see, priest four mana spell. This is the this is the spell we've been waiting for since pre beta. <laughs> or I think Noxious. This was around during alpha, right? Uh, greater heal. Well, not version. as this version though. Oh, okay. It was called it was Greater Heal, and it was two mana, restore two health to the enemy, an oh, enemy character. I thought it was like for each card in the enemy's hand. So if they had ten, oh, you would heal anything for ten or twenty, including their face. So you could mm -hmm. Akinai Greater Heal for twenty, and it was. Oh wow. Okay, good. I thought it was like a straight heal. But anyways, this one is a no. rare card, restore twelve to a friendly character, and it's a friendly character, guys. Okay, like I don't know how many people keep saying, "Oh my God, this is gonna be amazing in Shadow Priest and stuff." It's like no. Is not amazing in a shadow priest. You will kill yourself in a shadow priest. It's hard to read past three words sometimes. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, so this is strictly for yourself. Probably good against aggro or something like that. Um, yeah, any thoughts, general thoughts on this? It's a pretty straight up card, boring card, but it's a card I feel like priest needs, though. It should actually be I in mean, the arsenal. 12 is a lot of health. Yeah. When it comes down to it. Yeah. I think it's just pretty good. I mean, it's yeah. about on par with Healing Wave, which is played in very slow decks, control decks. Mm -hmm. um, it's one mana more, but you guarantee you know the ma the maximum amount of heal. So yeah, it'll be played in those slow decks, very slow decks that just want to buy time up until a certain point. But other than that, it's just yeah, just what it is. What it is, uh, just there. You just need, but Priest, man, Priest is like. At least moving up in rank in the in the best heal class. Before it was like third or fourth. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Cabal no, Song sure. Stealer. Oh, go ahead. I'm sure there will be videos of people trying to play Akana and then dragging <laughs> yes, the card and of failing. Course. Of course. Probably I can't on purpose, wait. too. I yeah. cannot wait. Exactly. All right, last Spree's card. Cabal St Song Stealer. Common. Five mana. Uh, five, five body. Battle Cry. Silence a minion. So this. Yes, another silence. I love this card. Huh? A playable it's, fine. it's a 5-5 five, five for 5 for the silence. It's it's, yeah. it's the best stats for a silence <laughs> card. It's really good. It is. So good. Silence. So good. So, yeah, there's always good. stuff to silence. There is. Always. There's a ton of stuff right now. And you even Grimy so Boo, Grimy Goon buffs. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's gone. Rip. If Iron Peak Owl was a three three, I'd play it in every deck. Yep. 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 Yeah, I mean, Spellbreaker sees occasional play, like in some Reno logs. It's and it's a four or so, three for four, but way worse. Well, Sylvanas five, five, is a Sylvanas will be a very problematic card too. I think in in a lot. There's been of a lot decks. of Sylvanas killing cards in this set. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, no, this... I'm not going to cry about it. Dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not going to cry about, about it. it either. Exactly. She needs a year, a couple years off. I think uh, Azure Drake and Sylvanas are like way too played. These two neutral cards should probably just get yeah. n not not deleted or changed because they're fine. Just give them alternatives, basically, like in those slots and those decks. Yeah. I think they're doing a lot of that in this set. Yeah, agreed. Uh, okay, guys, well, we're going to take a, just like a, a break, not actually like a commercial break or anything like that. We're just going to um, take a quick break, give a shout out to our uh, Patreons and our iTunes folks. Uh, those of you that might not listen, know, actually, because you guys don't listen to the show, you watch the show every week. Uh, we are available on iTunes and Google Podcasts a lot, and uh, we actually have a good number of folks that do listen to it. Um, or download it via that route. And I want to give a shout out to a few folks that le have left a five star review and a nice review. Dusty1982, J, J Man is Cool, and Shackham Marul. Uh, big th thanks to you guys for doing that. And if you guys also do enjoy the show via iTunes, uh, go ahead and do that because that helps the, the show a lot. It helps people find Value Town when they're searching for an I uh, Hearthstone podcast. So, uh, yeah, that's. Very, very cool of them. And also our patrons, uh, those of you know that this show is completely supported now by uh, the Patreon. So if you guys enjoy the show, want the show to continue in 2017, please come go out and make a pledge. We do have some awesome patrons already. Uh, our big legendary producers, Mike T and Louis G. Always a big thanks to those guys. And a few others want to give a shout out to uh, Radan, Gary D, William C, Johnson C., Paul H, Andrew R, James R, Grant A, Jim G, and Lance B. Big shout out to those guys. Uh, and we did meet our milestone, like I said before in the beginning, I think. We met our smile segment milestone. So we got to keep our promises, of course. No broken promises. Actually, we still need to do an episode that where we answer all your questions too from the previous one. But this one we can do th this week. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to get a, give about 20, 30 seconds. we got to give, give everybody our best smiles, all right? Like four a, 20 seconds 20 seconds guys you I mean, can you can like go from pose to pose but you know we, we got like jazz hands or something no, 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 yeah, keep we, the, okay we got pose. no 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 i will not be content with a pose change <laughs> come on right. thou right. must hold thy smile all right all right everybody ready here we go here we go starting now Enough, guys. That's not even a smile, Dan. Oh I my can't God. smile. Look at I can smirk. Just, Nox just has, has it down. All right, all right. Okay, and that's that's going to be our pro. There we go. TJ knows how to do it. That's the way. <laughs> okay, guys. That's going to be our first attempt at the smile segment. We'll, we'll, I promise we'll, 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 we'll make it. If I smile, I just look time. disturbed. <laughs> well, when you smile like that, you do look disturbed. That's how I, that's how I look, though. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Okay, next, uh, let's see what we got. Oh, we actually have a card from one of our patrons that, um, from Mechatorp, kind of a patron Mechatorp. Uh, he's got a card that's called Kidney Shot. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's a spell in World of Warcraft, actually, yeah. where it stuns an, an enemy for a certain amount of seconds and it combos. There you go, the exactly. The higher your combo, the better the stun. Yeah, so uh, he just has it strictly as stun a minion for a turn, combo stun a minion for two turns, so a rogue card here. Freeze, I one guess. Mana. It's like a freeze effect. It's kind of like freeze, freeze. But, but you can have it for two turns, which is kind of Yeah, I mean, a two-turn cool. freeze is, is, is pretty good. Uh, you would need Jesus. cards, yeah, I think. Yeah, this card is insanely good. Yeah. No, good card. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a really good card for one mana. Uh, I mean, like the, the art is just like, eh. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this is like, a this like, shot. <laughs> That? Body it's blow, body artist. blow. It's the same artist kidney shot from from Mortal Warfare. Yeah, like, he just scaled it up. Everything. <laughs> he just <laughs> supersized it. Like no, right. no care. Awesome. Right? See, you should go very amazing. literal. Just, just have like a medical diagram of an actual kidney. <laughs> yeah. Also, exactly. exactly. just like the part with the fist like, there. That's just like don't zoom it out as don't zoom it in <laughs> as much and just put like a kidney right at the bottom. Oh man. No, that would especially like from far away. That card would look great. Oh man! Big shout out to Lewis G for sending that in, and hopefully, uh, that's good stuff. We have definitely. a new word. There's a new word: stun. Stun. Actually, yeah, that should have been a keyword. Which means we could do synergy with stun that we don't do with freeze. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sure. Like there could be a different keyword where you don't synergize it in like in mage, but um, the yeah, word so stun can be applicable to rogues where they have like a dagger that deals more damage okay. to stun minions or blah blah blah. Sure. Or they don't retaliate. Here, how about that? A stun mechanic for rogue where the minions you attack that are stunned don't retaliate. 
No, that ah, would be cool. Okay. That's a way yeah. to self heal and sustain. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Good stuff. Anyways, thanks, Lewis G, for sending that in. And again, guys, if you um, want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash value town and, uh, you know, make a pledge. You know, that, again, that helps us continue on with the show. And we actually have another milestone, which um, actually I haven't even talked to you about it yet, Noxious, which is, uh, you know, if we meet that milestone, we can make some some cool voice lines for you guys that you can use for, you know, your ringtones or anything like that. We'll, we'll record your favorite Hearthstone voice line. And you can have okay. you can have this carrying around in your phone wherever I see. you go. I see how this is. Well, are you going to audition some? Because we need to see which ones you do the best. Oh, like, okay. We the, have to have some samples. Okay. Re- we might have to do some re- faceless. Oh my let's, god. I mean, let's let's get some auditioning going. Dude, I don't I don't even know what it is. What what is it? I don't even know it off the top of my head. Is it say in the light or something? Is it in no. the light? What's in the what? The, the flame wreath uh, faceless. Um, what does he say? I, I mean, I can picture it. He screams, "GG!" GG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway.